Sure. Hello, Guru Nation. How's it going, guys and gals? Mostly gals and guys, actually. Welcome <laughs> back. Thank you so much. I've got a very special two guests. We just came off of a YouTube members monthly mastermind. We chopped it up about business. We talked about my reaction channel, the Chris and Dan show. We talked about Aditya and some stuff we, he's got brewing with yoga and his passion, intersecting his passions with yoga and research. And then we've got Ashley. She's just got so many things going on, <laughs> you know, and the, she's with LICR, the Columbia Research Circle. And so it's, I thought it was interesting. I was like, what an opportunity. I've got two people here opposite sides of the globe. Aditya's in Ireland. Ashley's in Austin. I'm here in Arizona, but we've got, it's not about me. It's about them too. So they're both working for two different, but very big CROs, right? It's not hard to find out who you just go on their LinkedIn profile. <laughs> it's underneath the show notes, but Ashley's a remote site monitor and Aditya is a data manager. Uh, and yeah. They both got in roughly the same time into research, awesome. <laughs> more or less, yeah. at their company. Early bird so, gets the worm. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's a good, and they're both ambitious, and so they both do a good amount of networking on LinkedIn. So I thought it was good to talk to these two completely different career paths, but within the framework of a CRO, big CROs, and talk about how their career has progressed so far in what, like two years, almost two years that you've been doing it. Ashley is a remote site monitor and a DT as a data manager. Um, oh, so, yeah. yeah. So I, for me, actually, I just hit a little over a year with the global CRO. Prior to that, I was in research, but at a, a smaller site. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. And I just completed as, you know, I worked as a research assistant data manager, but right now I'm in a data analyst one position then just to clear that stuff up. But yeah, I'm into the data management thing and it's been around 18 months of my experience core in the data thing and the research stuff. Yeah, I have that good experience and one year in clinical research, like operations team, yeah. So I think this is a good video to show like the diversity of just within the CRO space, okay? We're not even talking about site owner or owning sites or doing consulting. That's like what I do. We're just talking within the CRO industry, mm -hmm. the diversity that exists, right? Remote site monitor, you got data analyst. Do yeah. your two roles ever interact, intersect? Uh, well, at least at my CRO, uh, sometimes it just really depends on like the scenario. Um, I do I do talk a lot with data management when it comes to queries, because query resolution in yeah. regards to like any updates. Um, so yeah, that'll be pretty much or any issues that are happening in regards to the actual system of not, uh, sites not being able to have access and stuff like that okay um, good aditya at your CRO, same oh yeah it's just the same like the opposite stuff so when it comes to the database close like when a trial gets into the closing phase so when it moves to or leads to the database mm -hmm. log we have the monitoring to be done by the monitor and again it's different kinds of monitors we have internal monitor we have external monitor and, you know, actually remote site monitor as well. <laughs> so they put their monitoring findings and they try to close out the queries from their end. Mm -hmm. So they try to move into the findings report. And after that, it comes to our team to do a review quickly on queries. Then we raise the queries or see how, you know, basically the things are going on with the data and data integrity and all. Finally leads to database lock. Yeah, this is pretty much in the data team. Yeah. So one of the things I, I hear a lot and I'm, I've am i observed over the years I've been in research is once you're in a position, any position, the leveling up is fast, yeah. probably because there's yeah. not enough, there's a shortage of, work for, of, of workers for the supply of studies that are out there. And 2020 and 2021 is just accelerating mm -hmm. that with the amount of studies coming out and not enough workers, right? So yeah. what have you guys noticed as far as like, your opportunities once you started, Ashley, a year in, Aditya, two years in, what have you noticed? Are, have you already seen the opportunities? Are people working with you on mentoring you in your career? How's that going? Uh, so at my CRO, um, I mean, I think it also depends on your level of like work, work ethic, and like the potential you have behind you because each person, everybody has potential, but the potential is different between person to person. So 
um, for me specifically, um, I had, you know, individuals like, you know, personnel reached out to me and, and already state within six months that, you know, what are you looking to move into, right? Like, you know, six months within starting, which is, I thought was exceptional. I thought it was awesome because typically you, you know, eight, 10 years in the clinical industry um, previous to this, I, you know, you move slowly, like a year and a half, two years, you know, so this is m much quicker. Um, I'm still staying in my role. Uh, there's constant talk about my potential and moving forward. And, but, you know, I just, um, I know what I like. I know what I'm doing outside of work and I know what works best for me on a whole. So strategically, you know, I am staying put at the moment uh, and also considering where it is that, you know, potentially through therapeutics, where I want to go, how to maneuver in that sphere. And, you know, if is the typical CRA route the best route to do that with, or do I have to, you know, go around and learn some other functional areas and research? So, you know, I don't, I think for most that are just jumping into the industry, they're very much like CRC, CRA, you know, senior CRA, you know, which is fine, mm -hmm. that works too. Um, but I think that if you have a, a passion in a certain therapeutic area, sometimes it's best to really think about, do you like the project management aspect? Do you like clinical trial management? Do you want to consult? You know, there's a bunch of things. So if you're going to consult, you want to learn like a full view, uh, view, right? And so you might benefit from also other roles before you go to that consulting route. So really getting the holistic view of things and, and moving in that direction. So for me, I'm sitting, sitting tight, working on my, my love projects on the side and um, just enjoying everything I'm learning and everybody that I'm meeting. What about you, Aditya? Oh yeah, it's pretty much the same, I would say in terms of my experience. My CRI is also really nice in terms of my upskilling career levels. They have a one-to-one -one call. I have a one-to-one -one call with my operations manager stating that Aditya, like, how do you want to, you know, progress in your career? What can our CR do for your upkilling your career skill? And that's all. awesome. I was like, yeah, I was like, okay, that's really nice. Like yeah. in my initial months, they keep approaching us, and you know, they're trying to know how what are my needs and how how long I want to do, how I want to. You know, they're thinking about me, so I feel so happy for that. My research career. And in terms of therapeutic areas, as Ashley mentioned, it's just the same. I really love my CRO works on good, good trials. And, you know, basically we're now into generalized thing, not too much of the arm and all, but it's really good. It's good. It's I'm exploring my ways. And in terms of my diversity with the teams talking and, you know, shadowing them for some times as right now, uh, mostly times I work, work from home, but now I'm into office just to get to know because it's, just my way how to talk with people and all get to know things and how to sort it out. It's good. It's going good. I'm talking with the project managers, getting to know their opinion and how to, you know, initially start with the site <laughs> conduct and how these setups goes on. Then with the data, I'm a data team guy. So I'm, I'm talking with my managers as well, my colleagues as well, how, you know, better I can streamline how things can work on. Also with the site, Queries, queries, yeah, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to you know, be a bit of handling that emotion between site and us, the research team, just to not lose off pace with sponsors pressure, you know, keeping that touch. <laughs> Absolutely. As, as we wrap up, I got to ask because people are watching. So yes. you've been in, you know, the industry for like two years or so. I mean, clinical research specifically, like CRO for you guys. Uh, is it starting to rub off on other people around you? Because that's the whole mission of Latinos in clinical research is like, let's get more people interested in careers in research. Once they get in, they're going to spread the word to all their friends, family. It's going to trickle down to patients, more patients joining. That's the core like theme for Latinos in clinical research. And I got a personal story. My niece, she's, I think she's like 21 or maybe 23. I don't know her age. She's something like that. 21 to 23. She was a sign language um, specialist and she's just not finding that, um, I guess, as rewarding when it comes to, because uh, those, that group, just like teachers, they're, they're basically like very underpaid for what they do. Mm -hmm. So she's, I didn't tell her anything, but she just sees what I'm doing. Cause every time I'm there at their house, like 
I'm doing, I'm busy with stuff. Right. So she asked mm-hmm. me, I sent her the five hour video. She watched that. She's like, how do I get a Latinos in research shirt? I told her to get one. I said, go network with Ashley, go pit her up. And she started watching all the video, bought the book, read the book, listened to the audio book. Now she's seriously considering moving awesome. to Yuma from Phoenix, wow. which is like three hour drive to do a study coordinator with me. And I told her, look, only when I know you're serious, you got to like do the CRC Academy. You got to be serious. So it's starting to rub off. Do you guys, without me doing anything, really, do you guys experience the same thing with your friends, family, et cetera? Uh, Yeah, my mom uh, actually works for CVS. She's a bilingual telehealth nurse or registered nurse. And, you know, finally, she's been, you know, asking more in-depth questions about what I do. And I told her, you know, in research, especially bilingual, you know, like, you know, clinical research, you know, sponsors or CROs are looking for individuals like you that have, you know, seasoned experience in the healthcare field. All you just need is a training, right? Um, so she's actually been applying. It's perfectly fine where she's at. She pays it paid very well. Um, she just finds it, like, you know, very rewarding. And so she really wants to kind of remaneuver um, my boyfriend's, you know, brother, who's been just to, you know, uh, chemistry and biology major, double major, uh, ended up in some sort of like, you know, IT data management. And so uh, in Colorado, so he's actually applying now. He's looking at the opportunities. I have friends that are doing it. So, yeah, it, it's uh, the more knowledge that, you know, gets out there, especially in rural areas, right? Um people just don't know about research and what exactly can do for you your background you know your background really doesn't fully matter as much as long as you know how to utilize those skill sets and talk about how those skill sets can benefit the industry right and so that's kind of how the aim approach uh, my my side business how it kind of just blossomed because I even realized those that were in research that have been in CRT position for years didn't know how to maneuver upwards into higher positions right and then ultimately those that are coming into the industry so most definitely it's trickling and i'm so happy about that and you're already an inspiration to many and what about yeah. you Aditya? pretty soon you're going to start being more publicly oh. facing you know but well, uh, how about like the rubbing off effect from uh, like people around you yeah yeah it's, it's good dan like especially when we had a podcast i got blooming with all the linkedin stuff knowing about data management but personally to be uh knowing this my friends, couple of my friends who have a career in regulatory areas, they are very interested. Like they have a pharmacy background like me, but they are more interested into the clinical data management. In in years before, they thought, okay, I'm a pharmacist, so I have to go into a pharmacy profession. But right now, opinions change. Things kept on moving for them, and with some other reason in their mind, they have made sure seeing very much boom in the clinical research industry. And you know, you are the expert in that. <laughs> you keep talking a lot of it. Yeah, uh, people have approached me over there and they were talking about how to, you know, just get into in this industry. How should I start? Where should I start? And, you know, I'm of this kind of experience, guy. So how do I suit? Am I am I really eligible? I'm, like even I get in LinkedIn as well, like even not in my pharmacy profession, not to limit, it's a dentist who just approached me and a physiotherapist who approached me and saying that I just want to pursue a master's in clinical research. You know, can you please advise me how the career would be, how your research career is? And I'm like, okay, before I thought, okay, a pharmacy can guy only enter into the research industry. I was uh, like, I, I was just limited with my experience at that time. And I'm talking about two years before late it is. But right now, I just expanded my horizons. I said, yes, you do have great research. You know, I do personally suggest to some of the members, your YouTube channel, go to his YouTube channel and see he's really into it. Every video you have, even if then there's a nurse practitioner. And recently, a nurse uh, who is a clinical nurse in Ireland, he approached me. He said that I want to really talk to you. You have time. I said, oh, yeah, sure. Then he said, how do I enter into the research industry? I said, just one message has said, put your name and said, this is the guy, see all his videos, how you can go through it. And you know, this is the way things are moving on, you know? Thank you. Thank yeah. you. You got the effect, Dan. You're a cheerleader, Dan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it, guys. Join the YouTube member. We're going to do the mastermind, guys. We just got off yeah. one. We all got pumped, myself included. Um, okay. So now you guys see 
Yeah, we're going to finish right now, but you guys see both of their Ashley and Aditya's LinkedIn links are underneath the video. And if this is on the podcast in the show notes too, the diversity within just CRO. That's all we discussed today. Okay. This, you got sponsor, huge CRO. They're actually arguably just as big. And then sites, which are decentral, right? And that's where I'm at. I play around there. But CRO, sponsor, okay, look at all that within each of those ecosystem, a lot of diversity. We just looked at the middle, man, the CRO today. And we've got two completely different backgrounds, careers. But at the end of the day, it's the same clinical research. We need more awareness. So thank you both, Ashley and Aditya, for coming on. Looking forward sure. to doing more collaborations with you both. Thanks. Thanks. Adios, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>